Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another record to play for you. Today's record is Superman. Uh, Weatherspoon, whatever that C word is, for 1975. So let's get started. In a crude laboratory in the basement of his home, D. Allison Weatherspoon, a brilliant young biophysicist, has been working on the invention of an alternate energy source to come to the aid of an oil-starved world. Today is Weatherspoon's 21st birthday. Ah, at last. A catalyst to speed up the fermentation of quick-growing spores which give off a gaseous byproduct similar to marsh gas. The gas can be compressed and stored in tanks and can be used to run the new virtually friction-free rotary engine I've developed. It will be called Voila! And it will provide a cheap, unlimited source of power for everyone and anyone. Realizing the vast potential of his discovery, Weatherspoon decides to telephone WGBS and release the news to humanity. Ah, oh, what a great birthday present to myself. A present for the world. Now everyone will be capable of creating his own fuel. They can grow it in their backyards and store it in their basements. Galaxy Communications, Clark Kent here. Oh, Mr. Kent, you're anchorman on the 6 o'clock news, aren't you? Yes, I am. Well, my name's D. Allison Weatherspoon, son of the famous physicist C. Allison Weatherspoon. Well, I've discovered an alternate source of energy to the limited sources we now know of and use today. That's an astounding statement, Weatherspoon. Are you sure? Well, of course I'm sure. Voila! Make it for yourself. How's that for a headline, huh? Uh, do you understand what this will mean to the world? Oh, by the way, a uh, personal note, Mr. Kent. Today is my 21st birthday, so, well, I'd like to make the announcement today. <laughs> you understand? Well, yes. Happy birthday, Weatherspoon. But listen, you can't announce your discovery just like that. First, of course, we have to make certain that it works. What? Well, of course it works. And once that's been established, we must make certain such a miracle fuel will be put to use. You remember the rumor of the gas pill that had only to be dropped in water? Well, of course. And it was an excellent idea, too. Ah, then you can see why your discovery must be kept top secret until the people are capable of controlling its use and making sure that such a fuel will be used only for the benefit of the people. Of all the people. Yes, yes. You're quite right, Mr. Kent. You're quite right. You must understand, Witherspoon, there are evil-minded persons in the world who will try to control your invention for their own selfish ends, and narrow-minded persons as well, who know only their own way of doing things and are afraid to try new ways, no matter how much better they might be. Change is always frightening, but it is growth. Why? Why, oh, why must power always corrupt? All power corrupts, yes, although Superman... You're right, though. Over the years, Superman has handled immense power and has always retained a sense of justice and fair play. Well, Superman knows he could gain all, but if he were to try, he'd only lose it. You know, Mr. Kent, while we've been talking, I've decided to place my invention in the hands of Superman. Well, he's just the person I need right now. A man with nothing to gain and nothing to lose. A man who's proved himself to be on the side of humanity. I think that's a very good idea, Dr. Weatherspoon. And I think I know just where Superman can be found at this moment. Incredible. You are a Superman, Mr. Kent. You've helped me out enormously with my problem. So what if I can't announce my discovery on my birthday? It won't kill me, huh? <laughs> well, anyway, today I received my inheritance from my father. And it includes a paper which was to be entrusted to me on my 21st birthday. I assume I'll be the inheritor of another of my father's fabulous inventions, as well as my own. Well, I can't wait to read my father's letter now. Uh, you may actually want to be present when I receive the envelope, Mr. Kent. You see, Perry White, editor of the Daily Planet, was one of my father's dearest friends, and he's the executor of my dad's estate. It's Uncle Perry who will be passing on to me my father's last words, which will undoubtedly be brilliant. That's great news. I'll be there, but do me a favor. Don't leave your house or go anywhere until after you've seen Superman. Can you promise me that? Well, Mr. Kent, sometimes the worst of times brings out the best in men, as my daddy always used to say. <laughs> Imagine, 
a cheap and harmonious fuel with no noxious fumes. Voila! Weatherspoon stands in awe before his simple engine, now fully aware of all its meaning and ramifications. No, no, Mr. Kent. I won't leave. I won't be picking up Dad's letter until 3 o'clock this afternoon. In, in the meantime, I'll wait right here for Superman. At the same time, in an abandoned subterranean atomic silo, 80 miles beneath the crust of the Earth, monitoring Allison's conversation with WGBS, the forces of evil, of protective device and self-interest, are gathering every bit of information they can get in an effort to put together a scheme to learn Weatherspoon's secret and thereby gain control of the miraculous fuel by whatever means necessary. Back in Weatherspoon's basement... <sighs> now I can understand how Copernicus... Galileo and Edison must have felt. Well, they were all links in the long chain of men whose Einsteinian minds must have formed the rungs of the ladder of thought that's led me to the great discovery of voila. The bell rings and Allison flicks on his videotape television alarm system. On the screen appears the familiar red and yellow S of Superman. Ah, <gasps> yeah, it's Superman. Wow, Kent sure found him fast. Weatherspoon speaks into the walkie-talkie system. He is connected to his doorbell. Uh, Superman, I'll be right up. I've been expecting you. Allison races up the stairs two at a time, opens the door, and at once feels a tiny prick of pain as one of the two thugs who's waiting beside the doorway plunges a giant hypodermic needle into Weatherspoon's right arm, a needle containing a combination of an instant sleep-inducing drug and a truth serum. The other thug takes down the picture of Superman's chest from in front of the camera of Weatherspoon's videotape alarm system, and Allison is tossed into the back of a waiting ambulance. The two men climb in after him, and the vehicle drives off. Moments later, Clark Kent, Jimmy Olsen, and Lois Lane pull up in front of Allison's modest home. Look, that's funny. The door is slightly open. Hmm, something strange here. That door shouldn't be open. Jimmy and Lois stare at Clark, who has bent over to touch a minuscule drop of red on the doorstep. Clark speaks as if to himself. Hmm, blood. Clark, you're half blind. Don't be such an alarmist. I don't see anything there. Still bemused by his discovery of a drop of type B blood on Weatherspoon's doorstep, with the aid of Superman's X-ray eyes, Kent zooms in on a counter in Allison's laboratory. Hmm. Allison pricked his finger on a broken test tube last week. Sure enough, there's a spot of type B blood on the counter. Anyway, Clark, you wouldn't know blood if you saw it. Anytime there's any danger, you're never around. I'm a pacifist, Lois. I deplore violence. So I've noticed. Jimmy pushes open the door, and Clark and Lois follow him inside the house and down the stairs to the basement. Dr. Weatherspoon, Allison, are you here? As the trio walk down the stairs, Clark scans the house to confirm to himself what he already knows. Allison is gone. Hey, look at this. Weatherspoon left a funny-looking engine going. Well, he'd never go off and leave something like this running, would he? My worst suspicions have been verified. If Allison's secret should become known to the wrong people, entire economic systems could be destroyed. An immediate empire could be built. And once again, mankind's the loser. This is a job for Superman. Jimmy, Lois, I just remembered I must... Uh, does anyone have an aspirin? Uh-oh, looks like trouble. Clark's splitting, and every, every time Clark leaves, have you noticed, Lois? There's trouble. As Clark runs back up the basement stairs and outside... Clark, where are you going? Clark spots a taxi and hails it. I'm going back to the office in case Weatherspoon calls in. You two take the Galaxy limo and drive around the neighborhood and see if you can find him. Check with the neighbors. Maybe they know where he's gone off to. Galaxy communications driver, and hurry. Okay, Mac. As the taxi pulls up in front of the Galaxy building in the shelter of the cab and faster than any human eye can see, Kent leaves a dollar bill on the seat of the cab, changes into his natural role as Superman, and is flying through the sky above Metropolis on his way back to Weatherspoons to pick up the trail of the missing scientist before the taxi driver can turn around to tell his passenger how much he owes him. What? Where'd that guy go so fast? <laughs> you think he was Superman? Superman's X-ray vision spots the faint tracks of what might be an ambulance pulling away from in front of Allison's house. 
Hmm, that's interesting. First, a minuscule drop of blood on the doorstep that could easily have come from the prick of a hypodermic needle. And now, looks like those tire tracks could have been made by an ambulance. Aha, there it is now, pulling up in front of the abandoned atomic silo site just outside the city. Hmm, I can see nothing inside the silo. It's lead-lined, of course, due to possible atomic radiation. And then spinning himself rapidly around in a counterclockwise motion, his arms in dive position, Superman transforms himself into a human power drill and plunges down 80 feet below the Earth's surface, boring closer and closer toward the headquarters of CSDC, Counter System Development Center, headed by none other than Malcolm Mullock, known to his friends and enemies alike as Mole. Meantime, inside the silo. Let's see whether or not the truth serums take an effect on our friend Dr. Weatherspoon. The drug administered to Weatherspoon has been perfectly timed so that as the sleeping potion wears off, the truth serum immediately begins to take effect. Allison moans and his eyes flutter open. Ah, Weatherspoon, your formula. But Weatherspoon's psychological resistance to the truth serum is so strong that his whole body has gone rigid as if he were paralyzed and he can't even open his mouth to speak, even though under the influence of the serum, he'd be more than willing to tell the truth to the mole if he could. Mole, just about to grab Weatherspoon and shake him until he talks, steps back as Superman bursts through the lead side of the silo, throws his indestructible cape about the three men like they were three leftover Brussels sprouts about to be wrapped up in saran wrap and put in the refrigerator to keep. I'll just knock this cape at the end here. There, that should hold you until I get back to pick up my cape. Weatherspoon, I've got to get you to the hospital immediately. I'll deal with you later, Mole. Hours later, in an interview at Metropolis Hospital with Perry White and Clark Kent. So that's the scoop, Clark. And when I woke up, Superman was gone. But I'd sure like to thank him. And I sure hope he's watching the evening news tonight. I hope so too, Allison. Perry, can we bring the cameras in for a close-up? I'd like to get a picture of Allison opening the envelope his father left for him. Certainly, Clark. Here it is, Allison. The envelope your father left with me is executor of his estate to be handed over to you upon your 21st birthday, which is today. Uncle Perry, you've been like a father to me since my own father's death. I'm feeling weak. Could you, would you please read me what it says? Of course, Allison. Uh, that's enough now, Clark. Get your cameras out of here and give us a little privacy. Perry turns to Allison as everyone else leaves the hospital room, tears open the envelope, then begins to read. <clears throat> Two cups peeled, cored, sliced green apples, one half cup brown sugar, one tablespoon cinnamon. What on earth? I, I don't understand. One egg, two tablespoons lemon juice. Oh, no, Uncle Perry. <laughs> it sounds like the recipe handed down to my mother from her mother, who, of course, got it from her mother. I think it's the recipe for my mom's green apple pie. <laughs> Great Scott. So that was Superman. Wellerspoon, whatever that C word says, for 1975. So please like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We have another video coming out real soon.